Commerce, the Executive Director of Invest Dominica Authority, representatives of the Companies and Intellectual Properties Office, as well as representatives of the National Bank of Dominica. This morning we have a few short presentations which will give you an introduction to doing business in Dominica. So we start with Invest Dominica and we have two short presentations on, on the opportunities that are available as well as the business environment in Dominica. So I will begin with the presentation on business opportunities in Dominica. News viewers, we are live at the Fortune Hotel. Outline on what we will be giving you. Dominica, the Nature Island. Now, why Dominica for investment? Dominica is the gateway to Europe, which means we're just like 15 minutes from Martinique and Guadeloupe. I think yesterday one of our one of our friends from Guadeloupe was mentioning that it was just like as soon as you you rise up from the, you know, the plane, you're back down again immediately. So we are very close, and this not just puts us into Martinique or Guadeloupe, but we're actually in Europe when you get there. So we're really part of this integration with the French. And just two hours again from the nearest US port. Why Dominica? We have free movement of profits and dividends when you do business in Dominica. No capital gains, estate taxes, or debt taxes in Dominica. So this is a major advantage when you do business in Dominica. We are an English-speaking country with an educated and trainable workforce with 95% literacy. It's also a great opportunity to invest in Dominica, which is a location with, it's not very crowded, you know, so there's a lot of opportunities for external advancement. Also, in Dominica, you have unrestricted business ownership. So for you as a foreign national, for you as a foreign national, you can own a business entirely foreign owned. You do not have to have a partnership or a, a, an owner from Dominica in order to do, a, to do business in Dominica. You can be, it can be entirely owned by you as a foreign national. Also, we have a diverse population of settlers with many nationalities inclusive of our Kalinago people who are here. And you may also have noticed that we also have migration from, from Haiti, from the Dominican Republic. And because of that, our population is diverse with both French and Spanish speaking people. So this allows you a very diverse um, population to deal with. And when you do business in Dominica, you have preferential access to international markets and agreements with Europe, like the EPA right. and the CARICOM. So doing business in Dominica opens you up to the OECS, to CARICOM, which you would not have had previously. More reasons to choose Dominica for business. Dominica is literally the only island known and branded as the nature island. This is the nature island of the Caribbean, and it's a very strong brand when you look at sustainable investments. 60% of the island is covered in rainforest. The island has an abundance of fresh water through 365 rivers, waterfalls, and lakes. Due to the volume of natural resources, there's great potential for solar 
and a 10 megawatt plant is, will, is being constructed. 33% of our energy already comes from hydro. Dominica has rich fertile soil with 33% of the island being agricultural land and a clim tropical climate all year round. Government has developed a sustainable plan to become climate resilient by 2030. So right now, our vision, we are all working towards this. The island is focused on attracting sustainable foreign direct investments and the French West Indies is one of our primary target markets. So this is why each year we are always reaching out to the French either through outgoing missions or incoming missions as we're doing right now. Dominica is a leader in environment preser preservation and we have a World Heritage Site located in the eastern central part of the island. It is an island with a wealth of natural resources, fertile soil, hot springs, green forests, clean water, wind, sunshine, good produce, and herbs and plants for all various uses. And the list goes on in terms of the natural resources that we have in Dominica. Local businesses and entrepreneurship are fully supported by government. We also encourage partnerships with you, the French, because it's not only just looking at starting a new business, but ways that you can partner with our local businesses and they can do some joint venture work with you. Overall, the government is encouraging self-sufficiency, climate resiliency, social awareness, and a green environment to support our economy. We recently launched four new sectors for investment, and I would like to present those to you as the sectors for investment in Dominica. The first is tourism. Government provides tremendous support in all sectors, and the tourism sector is one of them. Today, the government has invested in major projects, for example, the new hospital, the start of the international airport, and direct flights has already begun into Dominica and major road projects. Road upgrades are being seen in various parts of the island. Dominica is known as the nature island and it is beautiful with all these natural attributes which makes it stand out as a unique ecotourism location in the Caribbean. The island has lush green vegetation, natural hot springs, blue oceans and numerous lakes and waterfalls. So all these are the basis of a strong ecotourism sector. Now, there are other opportunities within this sector. Example, uh, development of boutique hotels, eco resorts and lodges for luxurious um, accommodation. Some of you right now are staying at Jungle Bay and this is one of our new resorts and you will notice that how much they incorporate sustainability, the type of um, the cottages that are there, uh, they also use renewable energy, they have their own water supply, they have some level of um, solar energy being used. So, and it's still a very luxurious place, it's still a very great accommodation here. So this is one of the areas where you can invest in. Also in tour and wellness service providers, uh, there are a lot of linkages which can be done with tour and wellness providers to sell these products and services to tourists around the world, visitors who will come to Dominica. Clean tech, as well as e-commerce and branding of ecotourism concepts. Today, we are into the digital world, so as a result, many services which would have been provided by tourism providers, they are now all available through apps so it is, it, it's very good consideration to think of doing something, maybe an app or some digital service which can be provided to visitors when they come to Dominica. We're also looking at cruise infrastructure and marina development. We have at least two sites which are being identified for marinas. Uh, some of you may notice if you've been to Dominica before, if you go up to the north, 
um, you will find that we have many, many yachts which come in there yearly. We act, although we don't have a marina, we actually have a yacht season where several yachts come into the Portsmouth area. So there is the opportunity for the development of a marina which can further enhance that. Additionally, we have some land and properties are for sale, small, small resorts, um, ecologies, uh, which are currently for sale. So these, if any of you are interested, you can contact us and we can give you the information. Or this is information you can also pass on to anybody else back in Martinique or Guadeloupe who would be interested in buying a small, small um, accommodation and then further enhance it to provide tourism services. The next sector is the organic agribusiness and aquaculture sector. And we're also looking at sustainable fishing. And you may see that uh, this, you know, when we talk about organic agriculture, sustainable fishing, this is an area that is more and more being asked for. It's in demand. It's in demand. And with so many changes globally, we believe this is an area that we should really focus on. And Dominica has so many natural resources, like the fresh water and fertile soil. It is destined to be a leader in healthy natural foods. Several species of plants, fish, and aquaculture can be grown here and produced for export. Dominica is therefore seeking to reposition its agribusiness sector as a major pillar of its economic development. This will be done by enhancing its organic agriculture, marine and aquaculture subsectors to complement all the new and emerging sectors in this period of economic diversification. So we are looking to not just play in agriculture, we're trying to diversify and go into more sustainable ways. Our government plans to increase agriculture contribution to the GDP by 700 million by 2030. So you can see that the, what we tell you here at Invest, it really comes directly on the vision and the plans of the government. So we work together towards that goal. There are several opportunities that you can consider, like vertically integrated agricultural and aquaculture and fishing operations, affordable and internationally recognized certification for organic farming. We are working on more certification or having a, a body which can ensure that we, they can certify the products which are organic. Also, agri-tech and fish-tech for digital operations and processes. No longer are we looking at doing a lot of things manually, but a lot of the services and the processes which have to be done in agriculture has to be done digitally as we move into that digital age. And also supply chain opportunities in packaging, branding, and processing. Uh, again, everything does not have to be done in one location. You can get the raw materials or the products here in Dominica and do part of the processing here. And you can further, you can export that and process it further in your, in your um, own territory. Also, finance providers for joint ventures opportunities in that sector as it continues to grow. The next sector is renewable energy. Of course, Dominica has been speaking about renewable energy for some time, and you have seen throughout the Caribbean or around the world, everyone is looking at more um, use of renewable energy. So Dominica is just a natural fit for this, for this sector. And we want to ensure that we have the infrastructure and business which supports the climate resilient efforts. So with the use and incorporation of renewable energy, we ensure that overhead costs are lowered and business continuity is secured after disasters. The island generates a considerable amount of energy from renewable energy sources, with about a third of its energy mix coming from hydropower. With several other downstream opportunities also available, Dominique also, the opportunities are available. Dominica is ready for sustainable investments. So it's not just the use of um, renewable energy, but also downstream activities if you're looking at drying and processing of some, of some herbs or products or, or canning um, 
canning of um, of agribusiness, of agro processing, process, you know. So all of this can be used um, with the use of renewable energy. Government has invested significantly in this sector. As a matter of fact, Dominica has always been a leader in the Caribbean in terms of being really forward with renewable um, energy. So right now, the work has just started on a geothermal plant and this will be complete by next year, 2023. This will be for a 10 megawatt plant. There are other opportunities in this sector. The opportunity for retrofitting of, um, of grid solar and wind generators for hotels, offices, and factories. So right now we do have to encourage businesses, the large businesses and others to incorporate renewable energy in their existing businesses. And this is something which can be done as a project, as an investment project, to provide this to businesses in Dominica. Renewable energy storage systems as well, for off-grid wind and solar power, capacity building, training, maintenance services, and sector skill strengthening. So while we move towards renewable energy, many of our people need to be trained in that area. So if you have that opportunity, you have these resources to provide that and to build capacity here in Dominica, we would welcome that. Green expansion and strengthening is also, and is also one of the opportunities. The last sector is knowledge services. This is very important to us right now, especially as the entire world is moving towards this digital economy. There is no better time to go digital than now. Our telecommunication companies provide reliable fiber network all around the island to support this sector. Mobile internet service has penetrated 98% of the island, so you can get mobile service almost, almost anywhere in Dominica, as well as, as, well as fiber for direct um, internet connections. The government of Dominica Inclu recently included the Ministry for Digital Economy. And through this, this department, we have been able to train a number of people to start online businesses and provide digital services in a number of areas. But there's a lot of more room for improvement. Yes, the government has started, but we are looking for new people to come in to have these businesses and even to work with our local people. So right now there's a thrust towards digitalization and virtual support in goods and services in Dominica. A new impetus in the knowledge and digital sector is currently leading the way in the economic and social transformation which is taking place on the island, presenting numerous opportunities for new investments and job creation. So we really do encourage you and your other associates back home to take advantage of this sector. Some of the opportunities in that sector would be to provide value-added BPO services or back office, uh, back office services, also specialized services. Because we don't have a very large uh, population like some of the other islands, we can also have specialized units which can provide support for large companies outside of Dominica. E-commerce and e-government services are very important and there are opportunities to continue building on that. Installation and repair in that sector. Small and medium enterprise financing and insurance solutions and several emerging sector opportunities in aquatech, fish tech and agrotech. So the knowledge services, because of the nature of it, it connects with all the other sectors. Because you, you all want, you want to, no matter what sector that you're in, there is an opportunity to transform your business or some of your processes digitally. So this is very important, and we really encourage you to take a look at this. So these are the four sectors. Uh, what next for us here? Um, we are here again after we have like a two-year um, break. 
and we're really happy to have you all, so we are here to facilitate you. So today, with the information we are providing you, this is just a, a start, and you will continue with your meetings, and on your return, you will follow up with us. Um, you may, some of you may have to come back for other site visits, and we would ask you to work with your Chambers of Commerce, and work with us directly so we can continue to build new partnerships. I provided the email address for our office, for my direct email, as well as that of the, um, the Chambers of Commerce in Guadeloupe and Martinique. So this is just a short presentation on the opportunities. My colleague, Mr. Victor, will continue with the business environment. Thank you very much. employees 
within four days of having contracted or hired someone to work for you here on the island, you need to register them for Social Security. And you will need to make monthly contributions. The employer, which is you, will contribute 7.5% of the total wage. And from the employee's wage, 6.5%, which makes a total of 13.75% that will be contributed to the Social Security Fund. Okay, and that fund caters for uh, pension and it also caters for when the individual is ill and needs to be compensated for days, uh, needs to be paid. Then you, the employer, will pay 40% of the wage while the person is out on sick leave and the Social Security will pay a further the other 60%, which makes 100%, which is the person's total pay during the sick period. Also, you will need to register with the Inland Revenue Division. Now, that's government's the, um, department that's responsible for collecting taxes. And it's important to register with the Inland Revenue Division also because you will be receiving a tax, what we call a tax ID. Now, every business here on island who is in the business of importing, that importation is done and is verified using the individual's tax ID. Now, further down, I will present on some of the benefits that are available to you as potential investors that the government provides. And that tax ID becomes important because without it, you won't be able to conduct your processes and you won't be able to receive the benefits through the customs department. So it is important that you register with the Inland Revenue. In addition, all businesses are required to file the taxes annually and therefore you need to be registered. There is the income tax, corporate income tax that every business pays on its profit and that's a 25% of the profit that you will pay to the state as income tax. Now, the fiscal incentive package, which is a package of benefits that the government uh, will provide, that includes, and it may include, a tax holiday. That is to say, you will be exempted from the payment of the corporate income tax for a period of time. Now that period of time is determined on the level of investment and the activity that you are involved in. Foreigners who intend to work on Dominica are required to obtain a work permit. Persons from the OECS, they may use a skill certificate. And in your case, because you are French nationals, you would require a work permit. Now, a work permit is applied for. Our office facilitates all these processes. Um, the permit is granted on a one-year basis, and it's renewed every year. Now, if you are the proprietor, and you are not directly involved in doing the work, then you may not require a work permit. Okay, but the individuals who work in the company or the business requires a work permit. We also have VAT, value added tax. That's a separate registration. Now every company that is tax, value added tax registrable. What I mean by that is there are a number of companies that provide service, certain services that do not need to register for the VAT. Why they don't need to register? Because the activity that you are involved in, you are not supposed to charge the VAT. The VAT is at 15%. Uh, that 15% is paid by the client or the customer, not by the company. What the company does is it collects the 15% on behalf of the government. And I know there's TVI TV in World Loop, so you are quite aware of how it works. However, in our case, if you are 
for example, into providing a medical service. You open a hospital or health center, for example, or healthcare center. You do not charge VAT on your services. There's no VAT on health services. There's no VAT on dental services. There's no VAT on educational services, institutions, okay? And therefore, these service providers may not be VAT registered. Additionally, all other companies, you are not automatically registered. There is what we call a threshold. If the company is generating revenue of 250,000 EC, with the current exchange rate, it's about 100,000 euro uh, per annum, then automatically you become bad registered. Alternatively, you do not have to register for the VAT. Once you're registered for the VAT, you charge the VAT, and every month you find the return with the Inland Revenue Department every month for the VAT. For the income tax, it's every year. Okay? Now, the VAT is also charged on imports. Whenever we import goods into Dominica, we charge VAT. Lower down, you will notice that I will speak about the benefits and there are some exemptions. That is to say, you won't be paying the VAT on the imports. Okay? Uh, you can be exempted from that. The rate of the VAT, 15% and 10% for accommodation. So the hotel you are staying at, if it is registered for VAT, you will pay 10% on, 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 it's probably included in your rate or it's added. Now there are other license and, and, and permits that are important. If you are into water sporting activities, for example, you will be required to get a water sport license. If you want to establish an educational institution, you will be required to get a permission and a permit from the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Finance. If you want to open a medical center, dentistry, you will be required to get a certificate and be registered with the medical board. Okay? Land purchase, I know that's something that's important. We have a number of national, French nationals own property here on island. However, you could purchase land either for private use or you could purchase land for business use. For private use, um, you are allowed to purchase not more than one acre of property without needing an alien land holding license. That is to say, Every foreigner, in your case, the French, you, you fall within that category. Not every foreigner, there are exceptions. But for you specifically, for at most an acre, at least an acre for private use, you are required to obtain a license. For business, you are allowed to purchase up to three acres without the need of a license. Okay? If you are purchasing more than three acres, you will be required to obtain a license. Now, there is what we call the alien land holding license fee. And this is 10% of the value of the property. So if you buy a property for 100 euros, you will pay 110. 10% goes for the license. Okay? In every case, in every case, if you purchase land here, you will pay the fee. One square feet, one square meter, you pay the fee. However, you do not need the license, okay? If you are purchasing less than one acre for private use or less than three acres for business. Saba? Okay. Um, now, we've heard talk about the European Partnership Agreement. That's an agreement, a trade agreement signed between the European Union and the CARI Forum states. And yesterday, Mr. Niza highlighted a few things about the agreement and Mrs. Augustine this morning. And I wanted to point 
to three important aspects of the agreement that I think is important to you as Europeans that you need to be aware of. And last night, Mr. Nizam made the point about he would like to advocate for your removal of the duties. And I think it is important that I shed some light on this, okay? Now, the agreement was signed in 2009. Uh, it was approved by the European Parliament in 2009. When that agreement was signed, what we had happening is that the European Union, all 27 countries in the European Union and including their territories, agreed to remove the import duty immediately. And this was done because we recognized that the carry forum states were at developing countries and the European Union wanted to provide the support. So all goods originating from the carry forum states into the European Union paid no import duty immediately. However, on the other side, all goods that are coming from the European Union into the carry forum states did not receive immediate exemption from the taxes. The European Union allowed us, the Gary Forum states, to commence reducing the tax import duty from 2011. Okay? Now that reduction is not done, well, it's not done at 100% immediately. It is done over 15 to 20 years. They gave us 15 to 20 years to remove the import duty from where it was to zero. And therefore, that's the reason why today, goods originating from the European Union will have some level of taxes. And it is not at zero percent as yet because the time continues and I think it, it, this will happen up to 2033, I think. So we have another 11 years where what we can appreciate is if the tax was 50%, it will be going down every year, it, will be, it is being reduced, and then eventually it gets to zero. So this is what the agreement has provided. All of the countries have signed and agreed, and therefore the reason for the tax on some of the imports from the French territory. The good news is that with the fiscal incentive package, which is what every government is able to help you with, the tax goes to zero immediately once you have received the license, okay? So I wanted to, to, to point this out so that we are not confused about the agreement and how it benefits you. Now, some of the goods will never receive zero. Uh, because the agreement also provides for an exemption that they say these are what we call essential goods and the agreement allows for the taxes to remain on these goods and it will never be removed. Okay, so this is, this is just to provide a little bit of clarity on the European Partnership Agreement. And um, the importance of the agreement to you is that once you would have established and doing business here, then your goods can go into your territory, go back to France where you have a huge market and your connectivity, go to the other OECS and CARICOM islands duty free. So this is the advantage that you have in establishing here because you are able now to send the product back to, back to your territory without the duty under this agreement. Okay, so how has the government, I think Mrs. Augustine has mentioned a few points, but I think it's important to highlight these points to you. How are we operating? How, what are the changes we are making here in Dominica legislatively and through our processes that will help you, not only today but in the future, to continue to do business with us? It's important that you have a perspective and an understanding as to if I'm going to do business within an environment, what is the idea or what is the thinking 
of the policy makers to help you to continue to grow and for your business to continue to be successful. We talked about digitalizing of the doing business environment and we are looking to get many of the processes online and today you can stay in Guadeloupe or in your various territories have your business operated here and conduct some of your processes even while you are away. So we have the customs declaration for goods that we are doing online now. We are also looking to fully digitalize that process and no physical contact would be required. We have the payment of your taxes that can be online, the filing of your taxes. We have business registration that we'll be spoken to in a bit. That is also done online. And now we have some of the government fees that can also be paid online. Mr. Sagosin spoke to the, 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 the entire government's policy in designating a particular ministry for digitalizing of the economy. We recently got loan funding for digitalizing the economy and the number of infrastructures, the number of processes will be placed online to ensure those of you who are platforms and who are into digital marketing and so forth, that is an area that will be advantageous to you. We've noted that the French love their boats and therefore as part of our, our, our national policy to facilitate business development, we have removed the import duty and the VAT on the importation of luxurious boats, okay? Now, there are various categories of boats that this benefit applies to. However, we've removed these fees to allow that you are able to bring your boat for use in the tourism sector, okay? And we spoke highly about partnership, so if you are into water sports, sports fishing, boat tours, cruises, whale watching, that's an area that would be of interest to you. So we've noted that and we, are, we want to make this attractive to you and therefore we have removed the, 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 some of the taxes on it. The process, you speak to us about the process and we can facilitate you, okay? In addition, we've noted the importance of manufacturing, a lot of you are into agro-processing, and we spoke about the VAT earlier, which is 15%, and the import duty, we spoke to it. What government has done is it has removed these duties, and this, the VAT and the import duty, and therefore, every manufacturer in Dominica is able to import equipment and machinery, packaging and labeling material for the manufacturing enterprise. The raw material, you will notice, is not listed and therefore an application or a request would have to be placed with Invest Dominic Authority for the exemption of the duties and the VAT, if applicable, for the raw material. Okay? And Government has gone one step further to provide additional benefits for enterprises that we call approved project status. These are projects that we've identified to be a minimum or to have a minimum of EC 3 million, uh, 1 million euro investment and then you will receive or you can request to be looked at as an approved project and once you are identified as an approved project, there is a package of fiscal incentives that goes beyond or gives you more benefits than what I have previously mentioned, okay? Right, so some of the taxes, quickly in the interest of time, we've talked about the corporate income tax, 25%. Uh, an exemption can be given we talked about the VAT, 15%, elsewhere 10% for accommodation services. We heard that there's no property tax. Uh, you 
can repatriate. That is to say, once you are conducting business here, you could send 100% of your profits back to your homeland, back to Guadalupe, back to France, and it would be, the government will not put a restriction on, on, on your ability to send this money back. And we have no capital gains tax. That means if you sell your business one day, we will not tax the revenue or your benefit, what, what the, the, the money or the value of what you would have sold the business, we won't tax. In terms of land and wages, I think this is important because in Guadalupe, I know there is a, a, the wage keeps growing and growing, and the cost of doing business, particularly for paying the labor, is very high. And in Dominica, last year, we had a review of our wage, and it stands at, on average, for, I have noted the areas that are of interest to you, factory workers, tourism workers, industry work and labor, and unskilled workers who are daily paid, they are paid daily, they are paid 750 EC, that's about, with today's exchange rate, it's about three euros an hour. Um, but I have noted here that this is the legal basic wage, okay? However, companies pay more. It depends on, on the skill of the, of the worker. It depends on how much you value your worker. And it also depends on the market forces. Uh, because if you have only one engineer, and everyone wants that engineer, then that engineer will say, well, my price is high. Okay, so it depends on the market forces and the demand for the labor. But legally, these are the minimum wage. That's the minimum wage for some of the areas that's of interest to you, and therefore, you can't pay less. You can pay more, but not less. Rent is also something of significance, uh, because you would require industrial space, you would require a local to operate from. And therefore, on average, within the capital city, the, 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 the rent is 1,000 euro to 2,000 euro. Okay, that's, that's the average, that's about 3,000 EC to 6,000 EC. It depends on whether you are on the street level, the ground floor, whether you are etage, but it varies, and the location, if you are in the milieu or on the periphery of the city, so it, it depends on the location, but on average, that's the rent rate, okay? We have what we call the industrial estate. That's where you have a number of businesses located. That is facilitated and processed through the aid bank. Many of you probably have heard, or you could inquire with us about it. If there is space, then, we are able to accommodate you and facilitate you to interact with the bank. The rate is different from this commercial rate, okay? It's according to your activity and according to the space that you would require. I spoke earlier about the, the, the benefits that you are able to receive. An application will be placed with Invest Dominican Authority and we are able to help you. In a sense, it's an exemption from the import duty, exemption from the VAT. What will you be exempted from? The import duty on the raw material, the building material, the machinery, the equipment, all what is necessary for the functioning of your business, okay, once you are qualified. And there are a number of other taxes that are exempted. I will not um, go through all of them, but we have Pre-approved, that is to say, once you come through the port, you won't pay. We have pre-approved uh, exemptions on tools and equipment required for agricultural uh, activities, and also those required uh, renewable energy components. There's automatic exemption on some of those. And we talked about the government leading to sustainability and looking for resilience. And we recognize that a number of persons are looking to reduce the carbon footprint, and therefore we are encouraging use of um, renewables in your business activity. 
Finally, how can IDA help you? Well, I think you probably have the answer to that. We've been assisting you from yesterday. We are presenting to you today. We have organized for you to, to meet business persons. We are facilitating your partnership. We are facilitating your networking. Um, we provide you with the support from the legal process. It is important that, and I caution you, and I would like to advocate that you consult with our office. Once you would have interacted with the business persons, once you have an idea of going forward, you apprise us of your intentions, and therefore we can guide you as to the necessary legal processes for undertaking certain activities. Okay, that's important. And so I will not labor you further. We have the entire week for us to for us to discuss and meet. I think everyone has my card and we are happy that you are here. We'll be happy to facilitate you. Um, now we'll have a short presentation from Ms. Nestle, she's the Registrar of Companies. I spoke to what's needed for you to be legally functioning here. Without this process, you are not legally, um, and, and every department that you go to will request that you would have already met with the Intellectual and Property Rights Office, and therefore it is important that we hear from Ms. Nestle the processes, and further if you have any inquiries or questions, then she will be able to take those. Thank you. Good morning, Bonjour. Good morning. My name is Arthelyn Nesty. I am the Registrar of Companies and Intellectual Property Office. Okay, just a brief overview. Our office is a division of the Ministry of Justice and Home Affairs, National Securities and Home Affairs, and it's responsible for the registration of all businesses in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Okay. The registration of businesses is done through an automated system, which is the e-registry. As informed before by Mrs. Archibald and Mr. Victor, Dominica is on a move to creates an entirely new digital economy. Our office is one of the um, offices that has begun this stage. And in fact, I'm speaking to you now, but if I were to speak to you two months later, we would have had a new and improved um, e-registry because we are now in the process of developing that digital service so that we can ease business and allow for foreigners outside of Dominica to do business businesses electronically. So we are on a move to improve and digitize the entire service. Now, through the e-registry, which can be accessed on our website, you first register as an e-filer. So once you register as an e-filer online, you can utilize any service that is available to you on that e-registry. However, at this stage, our services is too prone. So we have now the use of the e-registry. Unfortunately, we do not have the incorporation of payments online. So as such, you would have to come to the office. Now, this is one of the developments that we're embarking upon so that we can allow for the payment of services online and full digitization where we will allow for the complete application to be completed online but as it stands now you pay at our office but your service is done on the e-registry and also 
you would have to copy the forms that are presented from the e-registry and bring it to the office at this stage. Now, one of the um, benefits of the e-registry is that we all the requirements that you would have needed before are now placed within that e-registry. So it's an input basis where you put all your information. It will, um, you will be given all the prompts to put the mandatory information that is needed. And at the end of that, our system generates the prescribed forms or the, the forms that are mandated by law. So at the end of this, you can print this and bring it to our office at this stage. Eventually, you would just be able to do the full service online. As Mr. Victor informed, to operate a dominator, you need to be registered. Now, you can register in this first stage as a business or register what the law describes it as, register your business name. Now, the registration of your business name is just that. It's a business that you have and you register its name. There is no protection afforded to you as limited to your business. In other words, if any liability occurs, then you can be sued, your wife can be sued. It goes beyond just the business. So that is one um, disadvantage of registering as a business, but it is also an avenue in which to register, let's say, your small business, where you do not want to um, have any shares or other like. Now, these are restrictions that would disallow any registration. You cannot have the name incorporated, well, for obvious reasons, because that would suggest that this is a company. It cannot be the same or similar as any other business registered already. So, as you have been informed, we are a small island, and we do not like, well, the law does not like for people to be misled or confused by the different businesses. So we want, whenever you register your business with your name, that you are given that autonomy and you are given that right and everybody identifies that business with you. So there's no confusion to say, I'm going by Joanne's hair products, and I'm going by John's, Joanne's hair products, so your customers may go to another customer. We want to protect the interests of everybody so that the customer is aware that this is the business that I am going to that I want to, and this is the service that I'm being, that is being received. Okay. We also um, disallow any connection, registration of business names with who, any connection with the state or ministry or an agency of the ministry. For example, you cannot have a business um, citizens um, investing in Dominica for obvious reasons. It will confuse the public to think that this is also an arm or associated to a government agency or government department. So your businesses have names has to be far from that which is already established by government or the state. Please tell me if I'm speaking too quickly. <laughs> okay, geographical areas. For obvious reasons, we do not allow the registration of geographical areas. Although there are some exceptions to this, for example, if you have prolonged use of that name, you may be able to obtain the registration of that because a geographical area may mislead the person as to the goods that it is being actually, um, is part of the community. So geographical areas are not allowed to be registered in Dominico. Well, there is no registration of businesses with, that implies a connection with any political party or a leader of political party. For obvious reasons, political parties are not businesses and we do not want to associate with businesses with any. Well, the law does not allow the association with your name of any political party. Okay, there's also a restriction on the suggestion or if it implies a connection with any university or professional association recognized by the laws of Dominico. Um, this restriction also applies like your business services. You cannot, the business goods or services in association with it is proposed or 
to be used. Okay, so you cannot um, mislead the public with your services or your goods. For example, you cannot register your business with drones hair products and sell ice cream. These are just basic, basic examples. Or you cannot give a service, um, investment services, and, uh, well, investment is broad. Or you cannot give a service, for example, food and catering, and services, and register that, and sell hair products. So, so your business has to be clear, cut, and identifiable to the public. So the public cannot be misled in any way as to your goods or your services that is afforded to them. Okay, and there's a camouflage um, restriction by the registrar for any reason. Um, these, re these reasons are usually utilized for example, obscene words, um, words are, which are offensive to the public, words which would infringe on people's religious rights or movements. So we scrutinize this type of registration. For example, it might be cool to say like I am a hustler and you may want to come and register hustler services brands. But in the literal definition of the word, it means somebody that's associated with drugs. So these things, although maybe cool and hip, the, the legal restrictions remain. Okay. The businesses can be registered as a firm, which means more than one person may register a business. What is known as a partnership or an individual, meaning you alone, and a company. If a company registers a business, a business in Dominica, that company must and always shall be in good standing, meaning that in our registry, that company has to be up to date in order for it to register a small business. There's a legal requirement for the upkeep of your business that you have to pay 50 EC, 50 EC a year and also file your annual returns and to file that is $10. Now your annual returns is basically your financials of your business. Now in Dominica we do not have any demarcation between small, medium or large businesses as it stands now. So your businesses your business um, registration is across the board. Small business, large, you register it as a business name. Next one. Companies. Now, companies are completely different. Well, you know, a company is your legal person. You can, you can sue and be sued. So, a company is recognized as a person. Okay, these are just examples as to what a company includes. The people who invest in the company, the members, shareholders, will not be personally liable for the company's debt. That, that's exactly what I just said for soon. The day-to-day -day management of the can be the responsibility of the directors. So the shareholders, who are the ultimate owners, may not be responsible for the responsibility of the company. Okay. In Dominica, because of our we have ease business, you would not necessarily need an attorney at law in which to register your company on our e service outside of an external company and I will get to that later. But it is important that you pre registration that you discuss matters with your attorney or your your advisors for reasons such as you may want to ensure that you identify exactly what shares you may want to issue, how many directors you may want to have, because any changes thereafter may be at a costly may be costly to you in which to do so. So it is important to get some background or some legal advice before incorporating your company, although it can be done that's one of the advantages of our system. It can be done by the individual themselves. Once they know exactly the information in which they, they would need to incorporate their company. Okay. Now, this external companies, now we, most of you are foreigners, 
and you may have already established a business in Guadalupe or Martinique. And you may, may not want to change that name of your business, but you may want to have a branch in Dominica. Now you can do so by registering that business in Guadalupe or Martinique in Dominica. Now, for external companies, we would rely on incorporation on documents of the company in which you're registered, in Guadeloupe or Martinique. So you want to bring that across, you pay a fee here, one flat fee of $3,000 in Dominica. You have your incorporation documents from Guadeloupe or Martinique and you present that. But however, the law also prescribes that when incorporating that document, that company in Dominica, you will have to engage an attorney because the attorney is also to present a statutory declaration which outlines that yes, you have adhered to all the requirements of the law of Dominica and you will also have to present documents by a director of that company informing that yes, um, we, we have a privilege to incorporate in Dominica, in Dominica. Um, no business or external business or any other businesses can operate, it is illegal to operate without first being incorporated in Dominica. So it's mandatory that you first register that business in Dominica before you start any of your operations. Okay, this is what I just um, spoke about. So these are the, the, this is the information that we would require. Now, the name of the company, the jurisdiction, the company was incorporated, the date of incorporated in that jurisdiction, the manner in which it was incorporated, the particulars of the corporate instruments. Now, all these requirements that are needed under the law, in our jurisdiction, we have taken that and we have placed it on our e-registry. So our e-registry service will prompt you to place all that information and a form will be generated at the end to create your articles of incorporation. So this information is within our system. So once registering on our system, it will ask you for that all this information. Now you must have a principal office in Dominica once you register that external company. In other words, we must know exactly where your office is. We must be able to find you, we must be able to know where you're operating from. So having a registered office in Dominica is mandatory. Also, you must also give us the full particulars. Upon any incorporation of business, the full particulars of all the people engaged in the business activities, directors, the shareholders, which ultimately will inform of the beneficial owners, must be given upon registration. Okay, so these are also the details that um, you require. So, one, you must have your corporate documents from Guadalupe Martinique when registering that external company. You must pay your prescribed fee. You must have a statutory declaration from your attorney saying that you have complied to all the requirements of the law. You must have a statutory declaration from your director saying that you're authorized to incorporate in Dominica. Now, one of the requirements of the law is that you require a power of attorney for your external company. Now, that power of attorney which you, you designate or that person who you empower is the person that, if anything, any suits or proceedings, that person will or receive the service for you and that person must be resident in Dominica. In other words, yes you operate in Guadalupe, yes you are registered in Dominica, you have your principal office here, but we need somebody if anything were to happen, that person is the one that will receive all your service of your lawsuits or any other service or notice on your behalf. So you must name that person in your registration and always have that person on record. Any changes 
with that person has to be made at our registry. Now the requirements for this um, external company is that you file an annual return. Now the annual return will just tell us all the information, up-to-date information. For example, your share capital overseas, your principal office, your directors, your share, your shareholders, your power of attorney, all this will be within that information. Now if any fundamental changes of your company has occurred in Guadalupe or Martinique, you must file those changes in Dominica. In other words, whatever happens to your company in Guadalupe or Martinique, you must inform us in Dominica of those changes. So what is up to date in Guadalupe or Martinique has to be up to date in Dominica. If not, that could be a disqualification under the law which allows us to strike off your company. Okay, so these, these are just the basic requirements now under the law. Now, as you can see, it is a cake, meaning that it has to be on good quality paper, printed or written. But all these are gonna change very soon because we're moving into the complete digitization of the government service. Now, if you were to register any company or business in Dominica, you can use French words, you can use abstract words, but on the presentation of your application, because we're English speaking, the jurisdiction, you must inform us as to the meaning of those words. And we would have to um, compare it to the law and the legal requirements to see if it is accepted. Now, for the indigenous people in Dominica, we protect our indigenous people, so we do not allow the registration of words that uh, belong to an indigenous people at all. It can be done, but it has to be done through the approval of the Kalinago Council. For obvious reasons, we are the only Kalinago people in the region at this time with specific words. So under the intellectual property of traditional knowledge, we protect these people, um, our people at all times. Now, FSU. If you have any financial services which you intend to um, to provide in Dominica, you would have to also go through the financial services unit to get their approval because they are the regulators of the financial service sector in Dominica. So there are certain licenses and regulations and CPATF and money laundering. Um, scrutiny and powers that are given to them that they would have to embark upon when registering, when you have registered to make sure that you're in line with the legal requirements. Okay, the restrictions of companies is the same as um, the business names. For example, the use of Dominica. Well, whenever you intend to use the word Dominica in any of your businesses, whatsoever, then you must ask for approval of such from the Minister of National Security and Home Affairs, who issues a license to you in order to use the word Dominica. Okay, so these are, these are all the considerations I spoke about before. It still applies to the registration of companies as well. It shall not suggest a connection to the state. It shall not um, be scandalous or immoral, suggest any connection to a political party or legal. So the same applies to companies as well. These are also the same. Same shall not be similar to that of a business name or any other association. So again, this autonomy and protection on the register of not confusing any name with another. This applies across the board. The same applies for the defectively inaccurate words and the like. Next. Okay. If you intend to also offer your charitable services, your social, religious, sporting, you can also consider registering as a non-profit company in Dominica. The same will apply, just that you will not have any shareholders and you will, it's mandated that you have at least three directors for 
this non-profit company. Non-profit companies in Dominica must get approval from the Minister of National Security and also must be registered with the Director of the Financial Services Unit, who is the registrar of non-profit companies under the Money Laundering Code. Our office also registers intellectual property. Now, you're entering a new market and you may want to protect your brand at all costs. So it is beneficial that you register your logos, your names of your services that you offer to ensure that that is protected and nobody infringes or copies those, that intellectual property. So our office also registers your trademarks and your logos and everything as well. Okay, thank you. Um, we just want to inform, well I will speak on it because Mr. Victor spoke on it quite eloquently, that you have to, after registration, go to the Inland Revenue Division to register yourself and also go to Social Security. Because whether you intend to em, um, employ individuals as an employer, once you are registered as a business, you are considered as self-employed. So you still have to go to the Dominica Social Security. Um, we're very excited that you're considering coming to a jurisdiction. We're a small country and we have a lot to offer. And right now we're moving into this whole digital economy and the ease of doing business. So you may very well be able to sit in the comfort of your home and do all your business services online very soon. So we're one of the few jurisdictions as it's moving quite quickly towards a entire public service digital economy. So this will certainly um, ease your business. And my office is awaiting to see every one of you register your business. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Nesty. I was happy I left that topic for you today. <laughs> Okay, uh, I know we need a little shake up, uh, yeah. but we are moving quickly to conclude. We have the final presenter. It's important, very, very important. Um, how do you deal with your finances? How do you um, transact? And we are happy that the National Bank is with us here today. They are the leading financial, leading, leading financial institution on Ireland. And I will not take any more time, Ms. Johnson of the National Bank. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tiffany Johnson, and I will be representing the National Bank of Dominica, our Indigenous Bank. So I will be walking you through your business's journey with MBD. As we all know, there is no business without banking, so I am happy to facilitate and be a guide today. Okay, so I'm going to start with opening accounts at our institution. So we have four main types of accounts at NBD. We open personal accounts, we open white start accounts. This is, this is our accounts for minors. We open trading as business accounts and incorporated company accounts. Okay, so for personal accounts, I'm going to start with the requirements for residents. So as we know, you may be employers in the future and you will need to sign up your employees for payroll purposes. So in this case, your employees will need identification and we usually ask that a passport is presented. We do make exceptions from time to time, but we prefer the passport. And then we also need a proof of address document. So the documents we accept as a proof of address include a driver's license, a utility bill, a job letter, a letter from the employee's village council or bank preference letter. In the case of minors or residents who do not have any bills in their name, we would accept any of the documents I just mentioned from their parents or guardian along with the child's birth certificate or business birth certificate. The proof of address document provided should be no, no older than six months old. Okay. Okay. So for non-residents, we again require a passport for as identification, and we also ask that if you have dual citizenship, 
that we present all the passports to vote. In terms of proof of address, the documents will be the same as mentioned, so the driver's license, a utility bill, a job letter, a village council letter, or a bank reference letter. For non-residents, we also require you to provide a bank reference letter. So the bank reference letter is basically a communication from your banking institution at home, saying, just establishing that you, you usually conduct business there. So this letter should include, it should come from your country or domicile where you live, it should include your full name, the length of relationship with your financial institution, and a stamp or code confirming the authenticity of the document. It should also be addressed to the National Bank of Dominica. So, as you may have remembered, I noted that a bank reference letter can be used as a proof of address previously, but the bank reference letter cannot serve as both a reference letter and the proof of address. So the document can only serve one purpose. Okay, so some important points to note for your personal accounts. Any person over 16 years old can open an account at the National Bank. To be eligible for a debit card, however, you should be over 18 years of age. All US citizens and green card holders are required to fill out the W-9 form. And all non-residents who reside outside the US are required to fill out the CRS form. It's a basic form that includes your tax information in your country of residence. And also, as a non-resident, when you sign up for an account, we encourage that you sign up for electronic indemnity. So this basically gives us permission legally to accept documentation and other requests via a specified email address from you. Okay, so the YSAT account. So like I said earlier, it is our accounts for minors. We, so you would be able to open an account for a child or your child or any child in your care. So in terms of the adults, they would follow the personal account requirements you just mentioned. And in terms of the child, you would need uh, the child's original birth certificates or, or and the passport if it is available. So just a note, the child does not need to be present because the child legally cannot sign any documents under the age of 18. So you just come with the required documents and you'll be able to open your account. Okay, so the business accounts. So we have two distinctions when it comes to business accounts. We have a trading as and the incorporated company. So as I sure mentioned earlier, the trading as businesses would be the ones where you just register your business name. Right? So for this kind of account, you need your certificate of business name, your statement of particulars. Those two documents are uh, given to you from the register as soon as you register your business. Then we also need identification for the people listed on the on the statement of particulars and the proof of address documents as per the requirements we just discussed. So kindly note the following. All signatories on the registration document should be present at the account opening. If for any reason that this is a signatory cannot be present, we would need a letter from that signatory or that shareholder stating that they do not wish to be a part of the financial side of the business and that they are given permission for the rest of the shareholders to conduct business. Then we have the incorporated company accounts. So again, as the registrar said, incorporated companies are separate legal entities, so they are personal on their own. So in this case, we would need a certificate of incorporation and your articles of association. So these will be provided by the registrar, the registry, sorry. And we would also need a letter on the company letterhead stating the type of account to be opened who will be the signatories on the account, how many signatories on the account, and any products you would require, like you would say, would like a debit card or would like to sign up for online banking, that kind of thing. We would also need your bank preference, again, where applicable, and your account agreements, and identification and personal address for each signatory listed on your registration documents. Okay, so I'm also briefly going to speak on mobile banking. So mobile banking is our online platform. 
So with mobile banking, you have the ability to make payroll payments online. You can send all the wire transfers and EFT payments from the comfort of your office. You have, you have the ability to make bill payments online and also monitor your account in real time. And lastly, you have the ability to send secure documents and instructions to the bank via your secure messaging platform. So another feature we have for businesses on mobile banking is becoming a merchant. So with the merchant service, a customer who has mobile banking can come into the business and pay you via the app instead of presenting a card or a check. So to sign up for that service, what you would need is a letter on the company letterhead stating that you want to sign up for the service and state the email address you want for official communications. You would have to fill out our internal mobile banking merchant form and also fill out the electronic indemnity form again, which just gives us legal permission to accept documentation from you from, you from a specified email address. So I'm going to touch briefly on e-commerce. So electronic commerce or e-commerce refers, refers to a business model that allows companies like yours and individuals to buy and sell goods and services over the internet. So I've just included a checklist of things you need for you to sign up for e-commerce service at NBA. So from the merchant, we would need you to already hold an account held at NBD in the name of or trading ads. So you need either an incorporated business or a, or a registered business name. We will need a website relating to the business, a merchant acquiring relationship with NBD, and a business plan. In terms of your website, we will need the visa flag symbol in full color to indicate that you accept visa debit cards and credit cards. We need the MasterCard symbol to indicate MasterCard acceptance. We will need an integrated shopping cart application capable of providing an invoice number and a guaranteed unique transaction ID for credit card authorization request. We will need a complete description of your goods and services offered. We will need customer service contract including electronic mail address or phone number. We will need transaction currency, so you need to state that your prices are either in US, EC or Euro. We would need export restrictions if you know them, uh, your delivery policy if this is applicable, your country of which and domicile and your customer data privacy policy. In terms of our loans, we offer a wide range of products both personally and to our corporate customers. Uh, we have an excellent team of loans officers who can be contacted at 255-2337 or at credits at nbd. So that's credits at nbd.dm. Any questions? Thank you very much. Ms. Johnson, thank you. Uh, I would just like to note that she has two of her colleagues with her here, and subsequent to 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 is gathering if you have any questions or inquiries you can meet with them directly okay so thank you miss johnson again thank you miss nesty and um, as miss nesty said she hopes to see a number of you at the office or probably online miss nesty <laughs> registering your companies for doing business here and i hope to see a number of you back again during the course of this week so that we can see how we can facilitate you to expand and develop your businesses here. I hope the information was uh, fruitful. It will be of use to you. We will have the presentations sent to you all. And I'm sure their contact is in there. If you need to reach out to them, you can ask and we will facilitate. Thank you, presenters. Thank you all of you for your attendance this morning. I know we have a number of meetings coming soon at 11. However, we'll try to facilitate a quick break so that you know you are re-energized and ready to, to function. Those of you who do not have a meeting to start off at 11, I know you can um, relax downstairs and do the sea breeze, um, interact with, with the rest of us, see the city. And please, I know we have a number of persons who are coming from outside, so you have your time schedule. It's important that we, we stick to the time so the program 
flows during the course of the day. All right? Uh, with respect to a few housekeeping matters, I mentioned them yesterday. I mentioned it yesterday, but I would like to reiterate or repeat because I think the folks from MacBook, they were not with you, the people from Guadalupe, when I mentioned it. During your interaction and your meetings, if, feel free to organize any site visits with the persons you are discussing. Also, feel free to um, inquire about other business persons that they may be able to reference you or refer you to and note it and let us know so that we can facilitate even during the course of this visit or moving forward. Also, um, see your interactions as, as, as setting a platform and giving you a basis for further business um, intervention and further liaison with the business persons. It's a lot of meetings, it's compact, we have only three days, and therefore build as much as you can during your interaction, but keeping in mind that there can always be follow-up. Um, during the COVID, we've experienced an uptake in Zoom meetings and internet online interaction. We are talking about digitalizing. So this is an, an opportunity and a way for you to continue to remain in contact, okay? Mindful also that the meetings, we expect them to last at most one hour and therefore gauge yourselves with your interaction and depending on if you have back-to-back -back meetings that your persons will be coming so you need to, 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 to be concise and, and be informed as to how you conduct the meeting. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for and enjoy the day. I forgot to say thank you to the media. How could I? <laughs> In your presence, we appreciate. Yeah. Right. Once again, to our Emo News viewers, we are live at the Fort Young Hotel where the Invest Dominica Authority hosted their introduction to doing business in Dominica to the French delegation. We wish our French delegation a safe traveling journey if they're making their way back to Martinique and Guadeloupe anytime soon and we do hope that this endeavor is successful. Once again, thank you to our MO News viewers for tuning in and viewing this introduction to doing business in Dominica presentation to the French delegation by the Invest Dominica Authority. We do hope that you continue to have a blessed day and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. This is MO News signing out.